Hello, guys. Lovely to see you. Hi. Tyson, I've just been watching you with a beard for the last three nights, so I'm just shocked to see you without a beard. So you've you've well, thrown me slightly. Clean shave, clean shave. Nearly. Yeah. Well, you, Monday morning. <laughs> you're looking well. Either of you can answer this. I watched the whole thing with my wife, who enjoyed it a lot. Uh, just just so you know, but there were so many surprising things in it. There were so many things I was going, "Wow, did that just happen? I never knew that about Tyson's life, or things I never imagined I'd see in it." When things you watch like what? things like what. All sorts of things, your your honesty about mental health, some yeah. of the stuff that happened, where you went, even a trip to the Isle of Man. Every episode had some really strange things. And I don't want to give any spoilers, but other strange things happened as the show went on. So I'm wondering when you guys watched it back, were you surprised by anything when you saw your marriage on the screen like this? Um, I don't think it was surprising, but I think it's it's eye-opening to see your your life being showed in front of you. I think it is a strange sort of surreal moment to watch mm. your life being played out in a documentary or a series. Um, and I think it's slightly eye-opening to see y your relationship, your family, what you look like to the public. Mm. So, but I think it came off really well and it was what we sort of aimed for on the fact that to let the people see the real us. So hopefully that's how it came out. Yeah. You know, Tyson, you're very honest, as I mentioned, about your mental health in it. And it's a recurring theme. And, and people will know you by your own admission, you're up and down a lot and life can change yeah. a lot. Yeah. Was that kind of the motivation for this, that you wanted to be front and center that, you know, here's this highly successful, very wealthy athlete who struggles? You know, since my comeback um, in 2016, I've had a lot of well-documented um problems mm. mental health issues mental health struggles and i wanted to be an open book going forward from then because you know if the heavyweight champion of the world can be brought down with mental health problems and then, then anybody could and if it was all right for me to speak out about it then it would be all right for everybody else to speak out about it so i've made it my mission to be very vocal and very open and very honest with everybody whether it's a book the boxing behind the mm. scenes the itv doc and now this new netflix documentary um I wanted it just to be, see the real side of the mental health where people say, oh, I get it all the time. Like, oh, you've defeated mental health. And I really haven't. It's like, I don't think you can ever defeat mental health. I think you mm. can learn to manage and maintain it and see the problem coming and try and stop it. Mm. I don't think it'll ever disappear. And I think in this documentary, it's very clear to see that I'm still very mentally up and down all the time. Yeah, uh, it's difficult for the family and for Paris and everybody else, and how worried they get and how how concerned they are, mm. and how they have to deal with it on a daily basis. Um, but I just feel like if I can be open and, and honest about it, then more people will get help and it, it'll potentially save people's lives. Because yeah. no matter where I go in the world, I always get people coming up to me. You saved my life. You saved my brothers, cousins, uncles, sister, whoever. And that's more rewarding than winning any fight or earning any amount of money or any prize. Yeah. It's actually saving lives. So, and it's not through I'm doing anything. I don't have to go out there and physically do something like lift bricks all day or whatever. I can just talk about my own problems. And mm. I think we've done a pretty good job of it on this um, Netflix doc. So hopefully it helps people and it gives people a real insight on, on what, what I'm going through. How, how do you feel today? Today, I feel uh, pretty good. You know, I've been to the gym this morning. I was in the gym last night, gym yesterday afternoon. I feel really feel like my medicine is the training. Yeah. The training. training. Um, a structured routine and everything, and I feel good, you know. I feel yeah. good. Yeah. Well, you look good. All morning. Yeah. Uh, I'm still pretty positive. I'm yeah. Positive. Talking to guys like us. I need to ask your wife a very important question because she might be better uh, position to answer i don't know but i mentioned i watched it with my wife you've been together a long time now loads of children i don't know how you do it but you've you've rode the waves up and down and you're still able to sit here together and smile at each other do you have a secret to what the magic potion is to a happy marriage <laughs> oh i wish i knew what the secret was i wish i could tell everybody the secret but i just think the fact that it's not all sunshine i think a lot of people in this new age of life all look for the perfect relationship and i don't think the perfect relationship exists um me and tyson's both far from perfect and um i think accepting 
your partner for who they are um, can really help, you know, really, really accepting the person that you fell in love with. I do think love helps. I know that sounds so cheesy and corny, <laughs> but I do. I think, yeah. I think that helps. You know, if you really love somebody, you're going to be there thick and thin. And I think um, that's what we've done. Where, you know, we've been there for each other, thick and thin, and uh, keep coming out on top. So, yeah. And I think that, that our vows when we got married, yeah, it wasn't always sunshine and rainbows. It was sickness and in health, better, mm-hmm. better or worse, and until death do was part. And that was a vow we made in front of God. So Lord knows that there's been times where Paris has been on the brink of running away from me. Do you know what I mean? Like I've been, I've been selfish at times. I've been addicted to alcohol and drugs and doing a lot of stupid things that I shouldn't have been doing and trying to kill myself and not being a responsible adult and the list will carry on and on and on and on and on but she stuck by me through sickness and health for better for worse Mm -hmm. and i just think that if we stick together no matter what nothing can break us up um love and i think i think that our faith is very important as well to us because you know in that in front of when we made our vows it said god says like no man tear apart what i put together so a lot a lot you can be influenced a lot by the way world is today and everyone's in this little thing of oh if it's not working move on straight away and whatever well i don't work like that i made me bed 20 years ago when i met the woman and <laughs> if it was her sickness or in her health then i'd stick by her so yeah. she's done right by me we've got yeah. six and god will another one just about to be delivered seven beautiful children we've been very 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 blessed on a daily basis where we're healthy and strong um the rest is just a bonus mm. i always said i met my soulmate when i met paris and i was very lucky because some people never ever meet that person but i met her straight away and just because where we live in the position we're in that's not the be all and end all of everything i know if I lost everything tomorrow and we had to live in a cardboard box in Central Park, it'd have to be a big cardboard box. It'd have to be a big one, but we'd all live in it together as a family and we'd find happiness. Yeah. Well, listen, long may you last. Thanks a lot for chatting to me, guys. Thank you. We're getting a divorce next year.